Welcome to puzzle solving number 9. In this series, the video is divided in three different stages. Number 1, evaluation of the initial position of the puzzle. Number 2, calculation where we use candid moves to find ourselves in the new position we just dropped into. And number 3, a summary of the things that we learned along the way. So here we have the puzzle. I haven't seen this position before other than when I was getting ready to record this. And as I explained in the intro of this video, the first thing we should do is to evaluate. Why? Because we don't know anything. We just dropped into this position and we have to give ourselves some context, some information. So the first thing I'm going to evaluate is uh, material balance. Black has four pawns, white has four pawns, uh, white has a knight and a bishop, black has a knight and a bishop, rook, rook. It seems like actually for the first time in this series, we're going to have material balance equal, equality, which means that the position is going to be decided by another important factor. And usually, in my experience, what happens to be a high priority is king safety. And not only in my experience, it happens to be a high priority in most of chess positions. So in this case, if we look at the kings, one of them has pawns around it and bodyguards, and the other one has pieces. Normally, you want pawns. Why? Because in that way, your pieces, heavy pieces, bishops, rooks, or minor pieces and heavy pieces, I should say, are are making the damage and the pawns are serving as a defensive piece which is what you want it's a weak piece it's one point so you want them to defend in this case i think that king safety wise black is worse because black doesn't have pawns around it and not only that but white has some pieces around the king and this king is pretty safe i don't think any piece can even give a check it's not even possible well queen takes f2 is possible so but that, i'm not worried about that in that way i i i, I conclude White is winning in king safety. So material balance is equal. Uh, king safety wise, I think white is better. Pawn structure, because material balance is equal, I think pawn structure has even more of a even more of a high priority. And we can notice that black has two passed pawns, potentially three. And I think that would matter if this was a static positional uh, type of game. But because I already sense that this is kind of dynamic, there's so many, there's some uh, candidate moves like 97, rookie one. I think that's not going to be such a high priority. Okay, what else is there to evaluate? Or can we move on to calculation? I think motive-wise, before we start calculating in depth, I already can tell 97 is going to be a motive. Queen h8 is not out of the question. I have to always consider this move. I know that it's not working because of bishop takes h8. But for instance, if this bishop were to, to leave at some point, then Queen h8 is going to be useful to have at the back of my mind. And this is what we call hypothetical thinking or, or fantasy thinking that we imagine this bishop gone and we know that queen h8 is going to be made that's something very useful to have in mind okay so i think all of those things said we can get going with candidate moves we're in the second stage of this video what i usually do is and what you should do as well is have a list of the moves that you ha find more attractive in this case i find attractive 97 sorry 97 check I find attractive rook c e1 to get out of this this attack and threaten 97 in that same way it's difficult to it's difficult to stop for black from black side sorry and g4 because it, that threatens the queen other than that i consider queen h8 momentarily but after bishop takes h8 is out of the question and i i i, I don't i don't see any other move maybe 95 maybe 94 but i don't i don't see any other move so 97 check rook e1 and queen, uh, sorry and g4 sorry all of those moves have something in common, and that is that it's threatening something. I didn't consider king h1. I didn't consider rook e1, rook D, fd1, rook cd1. I'm considering moves that are, well, in a way, threatening something. So rook c e1 does threaten 97 because it's it controls the e7 square more. Rook b1 sh I should have considered, actually. But this is something that many people don't understand. When you're playing chess, you're not considering every single move you see. You're considering only the forcing types. 97 check, that's a check, it's forcing. G4, attacking the queen, that's forcing. So I'm going to start with 97, uh, G4, and then knight C, rook c1, and then rook cb1, because I should have considered this before. Um, I'm going to start with 97, as I said. That is check, but I quickly realized that after rook takes e7, which is a very forcing move, I should look at that, because that's a forcing move from my opponent's side. I cannot take back with the bishop, so 97 check, Rook takes e7. If I take bishop takes e7, I lose the queen. So already there, I'm I'm, I'm rejecting 97. After rook takes e7, it doesn't seem like I have an, any any good response. If I attack the queen, then 
queen f7 is threatening to exchange the queens. If I take that, uh, potentially queen takes h5 or queen takes e7. I think that I'm I'm not getting what I want. So already there 97. I'm gonna reject. I'm gonna play rook c1 now or g4. Which one's more forcing? Hmm. I have the bias that rook c1 is is kind of working because 97 is, seems to be difficult to stop. But just for for a little bit of curiosity, g4 attacking the queen. What happens after queen e4? Do I have any ideas? Then I can play rook c1. But then it's a little bit out of my control there. What about g4, knight, queen d3? Hmm. In that position, I don't seem to have any good response. So g4, I'm going to reject for the moment. I didn't calculate that in depth, and you don't need to, because what happens is that I'm going to look at other lines, and it's very likely I will get either a lot of information from those lines, or straight away solve the puzzle by just looking at other lines. So rook c e1 is my next move, and then rook c b1 if that doesn't work. So rook c e1, it, that, that's threatening 97. This is equal material, but if I manage to play 97, rook takes e7, rook takes e7, I did gain an exchange, and it's very dangerous already. Rook takes e7, maybe it's a threat there. Maybe g4 in that, in that position specifically is winning. So rook c e1, 97 is a big threat black has to address. How is black going to address that threat? That's a very good question. I think black has to find a way to move the queen and prevent that. So, for example, queen d3. However, after 97, king f8, the king is still unsafe. And I sense that there must be some way of forcing black to, 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 to give up a little bit of material. Maybe bishop h6, because this bishop is defending the king. I'm considering some moves. But I think we're going towards the same the right direction. Before I make the move, I'm going to try rook cb1, just to test what, what's going on. But I think after a uh, knight d2, I can't take with the bishop because my queen is hanging. So rook cb1, knight d2, g4, queen d5 to keep the pin. Yeah, that's a little bit annoying. That's a little bit annoying. I mean, g4, knight f3 check as well, maybe. Okay, rook cb1, I'm not convinced. So I'm going to try rook ce1. It happens to be the correct move. Black tries knight d2 with that same idea that if I take with the bishop, I lose the queen. Which I didn't, I didn't see. I saw in another line, but we, it's not a surprise, but it's also a little bit of a, of a move that I missed. Already there, I think that's going to be a lesson learned. But 97 check, let's calculate this. Rook takes e7, rook takes e7. Knight takes f1, that's the only way black can justify the lack of material. In fact, it's justifying it by equalizing it. Is there any way I can win material? And the only forcing move that I see in that position, let's visualize that once again. 97 check, that's a fork to the king and the queen, so black has to take. Rook takes e7, and if knight takes f1, if black doesn't take that, black is down material. Rook takes g7 check is the only forcing move I see so far. King takes g7, you're not gonna just let that happen. Bishop h6 check, and the only move for black to defend the queen is king f6. But, do I have a way to force black to stop defending the queen? 97, sorry, 97, rook takes a 7 rook takes e7, knight takes f1. Do I have a move there? I see. Maybe I can tuck in g4 in some move order. So, for example, knight e7, rook takes e7, rook takes e7, knight takes f1, g4. There are no checks. Black has to keep an eye on f7, for instance, if queen d3, queen f7, queen takes g7 is mate. So, once again, knight e7, rook takes e7, rook takes e7, knight takes f1, g4, queen f8. If queen d5 already Rook takes g7, king, king takes g7, bishop h6 is winning because the queen takes d5. The queen f8. And already then I think we are winning with queen g6. If rook e8, we just take. If black doesn't do anything and plays maybe knight d2, we play bishop h6, sorry. not. Well, actually, that's a good question. 
I will play queen e6 check. Hmm. But either way, maybe we're not gaining material in the following two moves, but definitely there's some danger to the perpetual danger or chronic danger towards that king. So I'm going to go ahead and play knight e7. And after rook takes e7, knight takes f1, I'm planning to play g4. The only question I have remaining is, can I play g4 right away? Answer being probably not, because after knight f3 check, king h1, I have to play if king g2, knight takes e1 check. King h1, I think I'm, I think I'm losing there. Queen d5, there's so many perpetuals, sorry, uh, discovery checks with the knight. So I'm going to take first, and then I'm going to play g4. Once again, rook takes g7, king takes g7, bishop h6, king f6 doesn't seem to be working. Bishop g7 check, we can try, but then king e6, still defending the queen. And we're down material and we're not finding the compensation we wanted to find. So I'm going to go ahead and play g4. After queen f3, which I failed to find at the beginning. Black is close to my king, but not because of a piece being close to my king, it means it's going to be check. And in fact, after g4, queen f3... If it was black to play again, black doesn't have any any worrying checks. So g4, queen f3, I think I would play queen g6. Same idea and even stronger because queen takes g7 is now a big threat. So g4, queen f8, queen g6. I am not threatening anything for the moment. But h5, h6 is a, something to worry about. Queen e6 check is something to worry about. Maybe g4, queen f8, even king takes f1 I can play. But my first reaction is always to ignore it. So let's go g4. And that's the answer to the puzzle. Okay. I'm assuming that after queen f8, queen g6, either queen e6 or taking uh, eventually, if knight d2, you play queen e6 and then take. And I think this is winning. Rook e8 is never possible. You are just limiting black's pieces. And many times in this puzzle, you're not winning material right away, but you are getting a winning advantage. So maybe that's winning. Um, Another move that I saw is uh, queen e6. Well, I think taking because h5, h6 doesn't seem to work. And just to confirm, just so I don't lie to you. Yeah, there we go. This is the idea. Ah, and rook takes g7. There we go. Even better. There we go. That's the idea that I was looking for. So knight of three, queen h6 is winning. And if king takes g7, bishop h6. If queen takes f6, bishop f6. And we're winning the queen and we win the game. Um, I almost forgot the summary again. So we we looked at the evaluated the position, sorry. We looked at some candidate moves. And I think the first mistake when we were solving this puz puzzle is to prevent or try to anticipate 92, which is something that I don't put a lot of effort when I'm making these videos because if we stopped to try to predict everything from move one, which is the ideal, the video would be longer. Let me know if you want me to do that. But I think 92 definitely was out of my scope, at least in this variation specifically. It was in my scope with this variation because it was a fork, it made more sense. But 92, you do no need to know what to do after that move. And we stopped once again and we calculated 97 check. If black goes king of eight, yeah, there's there there there's just yeah, it's it's a winning uh, for some reason I, I was I was failing to see this, but knight takes a five, you win the queen. So knight e7, rook takes e7 has to happen. Rook takes e7, knight takes f1. And realizing here that all the ideas that we were, had previously talked about before are now useful because g4 is now the winning key idea. And if we hadn't considered that from all the way evaluating, then it would have been much more difficult. It would have been unlikely we had found this idea. So g4, queen f8, queen g6. And we're not winning material right away, as I said. But we are getting a winning advantage. Black can never activate the rook. Once you once you see the difference between this rook on e7 and the rook on e8, and king safety in general, it's clear that white is winning. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know if that was useful. Let me know if you had any questions about this puzzle in general. I'm very happy to reply. Subscribe, give a like. I would really appreciate it. And have a nice day.